Hi, welcome back to Getting to Know Linux. We're looking at Linux Mint version 19.2 today. So I hope that uh, everybody is ready for looking at kind of a new version, new rollout of Linux Mint 19.2. Not a whole lot has changed, which is good because Linux Mint is probably the best or one of the best desktop, desktop distros that you can get. So if you're looking at something to uh, give you a good desktop, Linux Mint is a fantastic option, and I've, uh, I'm saying that mostly because it's, it is based on, on Debian, and it has those uh, those Ubuntu repos there. It has all, a massive amount of uh, just apt, gettable kind of utilities out there, including a lot of the Kali Linux tools for your security people out there. Okay, so moving on, let's see what we got here. Um, if you haven't downloaded Linux Mint 19.2, please go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and download that thing, get VirtualBox installed. If you don't know how to install VirtualBox, uh, you can look at one of my videos on installing VirtualBox and creating a virtual machine there. If you do have VirtualBox installed, fantastic. If you're using VMware, great. If you're using Parallels, then <laughs> why? No, I'm kidding. Uh, that's super too. And uh, that would be it because there is no other virtualization software unless you're talking about Box or Kimu. Um, KVM, etc. So if you're using one of those virtualization tools, then go ahead and grab a Linux Mint 19.2. The link is in the description below inside this YouTube video. And it's, uh, it is quickly available via the torrent. So if you grab the torrent and you torrent that thing down, no, it's not pulling it out somewhere strange in the dark web. It is pulling it straight from the, the Linux Mint users out there with the proper sums, which we say the digests or the hash digest and all those kinds thing so it is pulling down the real ISO to your system is it possible to get hacked oh yeah yeah it could be hacked sure uh, but anything could so when we're pulling that image down go ahead and grab the torrent that is not a big bad thing so you don't have to worry about that that's not a big stressor there so let's look at what we've got VirtualBox here uh, we've got the VirtualBox install I've got it I went ahead and configured it so I did Linux Mint 19.2 there we can see that I'm using the Ubuntu 64-bit distro. We've got my home directory on there. I've got my memory set at four gig. I'm using four CPUs. And I've got a little acceleration in there. Took the display memory, which if you go over to settings there when you're building these things out. Uh, took the display and just slammed it all the way to the right right there to give us as much display memory as possible. On the storage, I added that ISO that I just downloaded. So that ISO that I pulled down, I went ahead and pop that into the storage there. The audio, I'm leaving that normal. Uh, network, I've got that on a bridged adapter right now. And the other things, I'm not using uh, anything special with serial ports or USB or shared folders, etc. right now. Uh, in, I am creating this video on Linux Mint. Ooh, I think I'm running 19.1 uh, to create this video. And uh, I've got window, I've got a, a Windows XP Pro machine up there uh, to, to play with. And then I've got my uh, Linux Mint 19.2 machine, if you look over here in VirtualBox, uh, to play with right now. So I do have those two machines there. Some people might say like, why are you got Windows XP Pro? Well, because it runs on 64 megabytes of RAM and you can create a thousand of those things. And it's a great exercise for hacking stuff. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun. All right, so over here we got uh, Linux Mint 19.2. So let's go ahead and start that thing up. So when we start this, I'm gonna hopefully be able to pop over and, and see what this looks like. You see this automatic boot in nine, eight, seven. If you click inside of that window and you hit the tab key, it will show you what options you have. And you can see we're welcome to Linux Mint 19.2 Cinnamon 64-bit. We have the start Linux Mint there. We have the start and compatibility mode if there's something really wrong. There's an OA OEM install mode, which allow you to go ahead and get that thing set up and install it for someone if you're building a computer for them. There's an integrity check, which is just checks the ISO that you downloaded to be sure that's okay. I mean, really, if you install it and it fails, then <laughs> it's not okay. Um, but if you want to run the integ integrity check, it'd take about five minutes. So you can do that too. It depends on your system, of course. Memory test, you can go through. And uh, if this was hardware, like I'm running Linux Mint on my physical hardware right now. But in this environment, as we do the video, we're inside of VirtualBox. So doing a memory test inside of VirtualBox is, is not really all that useful. And then there's boot from local drive. And this is a brand new machine that I just created. So it doesn't have anything in the local drive. So this will be the uh, the first time to kind of boot this thing up uh, if you want to go through and, and start it up. But the boot from local drive option, that is not going to help us there. Uh, so we'll go right there to start Linux Mint and press enter. Once we press enter on that, uh, that is not a mouse kind of mouseable screen. You do need to navigate with your keyboard 
if you choose to press the uh, the tab like I did to bring that up. So we're going to wait for that machine to start. It won't take long at all to pop up. You'll see that the uh, the screen's already coming to life. Um, let's see if it, it expands out and makes this nice big screen for me. All right, didn't it looks like about 800 by 600 screen is what it gave me by default, which is fine, especially if you're looking at installing this on some older hardware. You don't want this thing to go white, you know, just go nuts with uh, with resolution. I'm running on a 4K monitor here, so I do have this over on that. Um, and we can change the resolution. I'm going to go to settings right now. And just before we get started, I'm going to change my resolution. So this is actually a, uh, before we go in and look at it and do all the configurations. I'm changing my, yep, sure enough, 800 by 600 right there. Let's make this a 16 by 9. Let's see, got 1360. What else do we have? Oh, there's 16 by 9. All right, 1610s. We'll do a 1610. And apply. See if that fits right there. Yep, keep that config and we'll close that down. Okay, so there you go. There's a, uh, a better resolution for us. So we kind of see the desktop a little bit better now. And as we go through and look at this, let's go ahead and see what's going on on the desktop. So we've got a little mint leaf icon in the lower left-hand corner there. Comes up, you've got your, your options. So you can go through and go to your accessories and all those kind of things. You have your graphics and, and internet. Now this is using their, I believe they call it the modern interface, which is, uh, in my humble opinion, the modern interface is an abomination and should be done away with. And I think it's called modern, we'll find out in a second. Uh, but this modern interface is is dreadful. Uh, there, there are a bunch of little problems with this. Uh, things like you want to drag things over and put them in your, your panel down here. And uh, that that's just gets me kind of problematic in, in this interface, which they're doing a great job with this, by the way. Uh, Linux Mint 922, it just looks great. I love the icons. I love the little choices they have here. Um, the other thing is, let's say we start this. I'm going to, I, I picked this text editor for kind of a reason here that we're going to start this up and I want to start another one. Normally I'd hit the icon that I put down here in my, my here, I'll start this. Down in the, the task bar down here, the cool quick launch, I would hit that and I would start another one and I'd just click it. But I can't because now what it's doing is it's bringing this up. So now I have a right click go over and say open a new window and over here right click and choose new window. Now I've got two windows and I want to separate those out because let's say I'm doing research on two different things and I'm going to break those windows over. Well now I've got that running and down here I have to hover over this to see which one's which. So if I save a document and I say this is, is test01.txt uh, and I'll go ahead and copy that. And if you can't see that, I'll change the font in just a minute. So I'll go ahead and save this, but this is why I'm not gonna be using this interface. Um, over here, let's go grab that. I'll save that test01.txt, save. And then over here, I'll say this is a video list, video list.txt. And I'm typing the name in there right in the text area because I've got nothing else to type. There's <laughs> there's no reason for me to type that there. So let's go ahead and choose save as there. And I'll save that video list, I'll throw it in documents too. Save. Now, all right, yes, there. So now I've got both these files. They're clearly identified. One's a test. Let's say you're creating a test for a classroom. There's a video list. You're just doing a little video stuff and you, you wanna create a, a bunch of videos. You got a video list there. You're doing YouTube videos. Down here, I can't tell which one's which until I go down and hover and look at it to get to which one I want. So if these are minimized or they're behind other windows or like this right here is up and they've got another window behind it, which is the default behavior and it will change this too. There are a couple of things we're gonna have to fix. Okay, we'll look at about nine-ish, seven-ish, 10-ish things to fix here. So we'll fix a couple of things in the interface to make this a really usable distro um, moving forward. And that way we won't have any problems with it. Uh, and, and if you are a Linux Mint developer, then I hope that you're watching. There are a couple of things here that would just really take Linux Mint to the next level. And uh, not to say that you guys are not doing an absolutely outstanding job right now. But if we go through and open up a few windows, let's open up a new window. And uh, if you notice, the windows are stacking directly on top of one another. So I had to move this down to see what's going on there. So the windows are actually stacking on each other. That is a huge problem when you're you're opening up a bunch of windows and you want to see what they are. And you think, well, that's no problem because just go down here and, oh, I've got to hover over this and wait for the window to come up to go pick which one I want. Well, that's really annoying. 
we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna leave this just the way it is, and our first task is gonna to be to get rid of this modern interface and get back to the traditional interface. And hopefully, it's not gonna mess up our icons. Um, if they didn't, uh, well, you know, if the developers made a decision to not provide the same icon to support, then, you know, it won't. Uh, so mess up our icons and things of that sort. But hopefully they did not make that decision and we'll get the cool icons we can see here and, and everything's really slick. All right, so here we are. I just opened the welcome screen. So on the welcome screen, I got first steps and I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna choose, yeah, the modern interface is what's selected right now. And it says it groups windows, a small system tray, small look at uh, a modern looking theme. I do like the theme, it is very nice. But unfortunately, unfortunately, the modern theme is unusable. And so I'm gonna to have to switch away from that. So I'm gonna click on traditional there. I have clicked traditional, it takes just a few seconds. And now that I've clicked traditional, if you look at the bottom of my screen, I can see all of these different things. So if I get different websites open, different web pages and different web browsers and things like that, I can see that at the bottom. Now given, if you have multiple tabs open, then of course the tabs are still in whatever you're doing. Uh, but I can see, oh, pop test document. Oh wait, where's the other document? Oh, their video list, great. And I can see the names of what I'm going to right there in my taskbar. Very convenient and it makes it where it's really usable. So there you go, first change is fixing the modern theme, popping down and switching back over to traditional. The next is the stacking that we get. Uh, yeah, close the tabs. The next we get is the stacking issue. And I guess in order to look at that, let's go ahead and look at some settings. So I'm gonna go through and pop into settings. And I'm gonna play with these settings here. I'm running Linux Mint in my desktop right now. So I don't have a real need to install this, but I will install this at the end of the video and, and you can watch through the end if you want to. Um, or I'll make a new video and I'll just choose install Linux Mint and I'll pick that and I'll, th I'll throw that up as another video, whichever. Uh, but I am running Linux Mint on my desktop, so actually running this and choosing to, uh, to go ahead and install it inside a virtual machine doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me. But looking at this before I replace my, uh, my desktop, my 19.1 with 19.2, this is really nice. So let's go ahead and start at the top. Appearance, we've got the font selection, themes, effects, backgrounds. Uh, so going from top down, let's go uh, backgrounds, effects, font selection, and themes. We do want to come back and fix that window stacking issue. But now that I, I come into this, looking from top down, we should probably just go ahead and pop into themes. So let's pop into themes here. And there is something that was coming up for me, a little issue that was arising for me inside of the browser. And that is when we come over here, this Linux Mint page, and this bar is just a little bit small over on this side. So it's not too small. It has been a lot smaller before in the past. It's just a little bit small. And the way you get to fix that, you go to settings, and you can say override this. And instead of a 10, we'll pop that up to a 15. You can see what that looks like on there. And we can go look at this, and we can see, oh, look at that, we got this, this bar if there was any change to it. <laughs> but you'd have to go through and uh, we'll have to restart. We'll have to restart, there we go, to get that bar there. And the bar does, you know, it's over to the side. If you want it that large, you can make it that large. If you want to make it minuscule, go ahead. It's it's your Linux, you can do whatever you want to with it. Okay, pop it back over. Going down from there, let's go ahead and look at the date and time. So the date and time, I see we got the date down there. It says I'm over in London, I am not, but that's, that's okay, because all I want to do is choose display the date. I want to know what the day is and with the date. So Tuesday, August 6th, 2219, which is not right now, but that's fine. I want to know that. So I need to put that date in there, and that way by checking that little box, by just choosing that, you can see down here in the right corner, it goes from just a number, and it tells me what day of the week it is and what the date is, and that's just really nice great feature I use this all the time it's just a it's a great little feature inside this all right hot corners let's look at hot corners here enable the corner I'm definitely going to use that for showing all my workspaces so anytime you go up into this corner up here and you hit the corner inside of your machine it's going to give you these four desktops so you can see your desktops you want to create some desktops hit the plus over there you can build some more desktops you want to get rid of one just go over and, and get rid of one if you want to rename them just go ahead and click in that and rename it Oh, yeah, you can, uh, in that, you can also go over and you can drag the apps that you're in to different desktops. 
<clears throat> so let's keep going through on this right there. And so we got hot corners going, going on there. Privacy, if you want it to remember where you've been, that's great. So uh, that never forget old files. I've got that selected for me. So if you want that selected for you, that way you will actually get recent files. And down here, you look at recent files, it'll show you a list of your recent files there. And when you go into a file, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab Z and the X editor right there over here. I'm gonna pull that down right there. And when I go into this file, if I go to file, you'll see it's got a list there. If I turn off the uh, the little forgetting files, like remember recently accessed files, if I turn that off, those go away. So we don't want that. I well, you might want that. Hey, well, you know. Not, you're not going to say anything. Maybe you want to delete all the files. You don't need history on your system. So there you go. Uh, screensaver. Go over the screensaver there. This is a virtual machine. So I'm going to say, no, do not turn on the screensaver. Go ahead and set this lock immediately. I'm not going to, not going to even mess with that. I'm just going to turn those off and say, yes, that's off. And uh, if I want to lock the screen, well, it's a virtual machine, but you can hit control alt L to lock the screen. And uh, hopefully control alt T will still open up a terminal. Yeah, sure enough, you get a terminal up in there. So that's great. Um, then let's go over to, uh, let's see, we got that. Let me look on down. We have the window tiling and windows down here. So let's click on window tiling and see what we've got. All right. Tile the windows looks fine. A couple of options there. You got the windows. We have a behavior tab up here. So if you see the behavior tab, location of newly opened windows. Well, now if I go down here and I click this, it does what I expect it to do. It just keeps opening more. So you can see these new tabs come up. I'm going to close that. Instead of center, I'm going to make it automatic. That way, when I start an app, if I go over and start another one, and let's go ahead and just do this start Firefox a couple times, start Firefox again, and you see how it's stacking my windows. So it's no longer putting the windows right in the middle of my desktop. It's now stacking the windows so they're easier to get to. And that, and you can see what's going on behind a window, etc. cetera. Uh, really fast, now that I got this X editor open, that little, that little text editor, and bring this thing up, a couple of settings I do in there. Go over to edit, down to preferences, on the display, yes, I want line numbers on there. I do want my right margin on there. So that, that will show you where the margin of the paper is over on the right side. If I can get this, drag that over somewhere. The resolution is only 1440, I think. So there we go. Shows you the right margin over there. Uh, tab width, use spaces instead of tabs. No, I want actual tabs to be inserted because I copy and paste between a lot of different data analysis software and uh, that spaces causes problems. The save, you can set up auto save if you want to. The theme, I'm gonna choose Cobalt on that theme. And uh, as far as plugins, the plugins in here are, you know, eh, not a lot of them right now, but uh, if you wanna install G-Edit, they'll have a few more plugins in there. But back in the editor there, we've got the highlight the current line. I don't use that if you want to, it just shows you the entire line that you're on there. The highlight matching brackets, I don't use that, but it's also kind of a neat thing. Uh, a neat thing. Word wrap, of course, allows it to word wrap around and uh, the line numbers. Overview, overview map just gives you kind of a, a picture on the right hand side there of where you were in the document. So if you want that kind of thing, I use that occasionally. Eh, there you go. Oh, theme. If you want to go through it and, and change your theme, um, so you want to change the, the font there inside of that, then let's see if there's a font option. It didn't come up in the theme. And that may be something a little new. So how do you change that? Add a new scheme? Hmm. I don't know. Close. I can always just type something and then scroll and make it bigger. But I wonder if there's a way for me to just uh, change that in here. So there may be a place to change the font inside of there. I'm not seeing it with the theme selection. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and open uh, Z over my system. Ah, there is the system font right there in editor. What am I thinking? Editor, it says use the system fixed font. Bam, there. Increase that just a little bit. 14, select, close. There. 
Now, if you want to increase that, you've increased that. That is a side note, and that's just configuring said, so close without saving. All right, so we've got that going on. We now fixed the window behavior, so everything is going the right way in Windows. We turned on hot corners. We fixed the date and time. We changed our scroll bar width, which is something you may or may not want to do. If you're okay with the scroll bar width the way it is, then that's great. On a 4K monitor, that scroll bar is really tiny. Uh, so unless they've made some kind of compensation for that in 19.1, that of which I'm unaware, aware, then I need to adjust the scroll bar width. On uh, this one, on this machine, the scroll bar is kind of huge for uh, for what it is. So on this machine, because the resolution's so low, I have a huge scroll bar, and I can just use my mouse to scroll anyway. But I have a huge scroll bar, so it's not a big deal. Another thing is going to the keyboard, and uh, over here having a repeat speed, I pop that all the way up so that this thing will actually repeat the letters quickly when I want to when I want to do that kind of thing on power management we're in a virtual machine so I'm gonna say no never take my screen off if I want the screen to go off I'll have the hardware screen go off I don't need my virtual machine screen to go off and then the very last thing down at the bottom here is software sources so let's go ahead and select software sources when this comes up we're gonna say yeah choose the closest mirror and when you click this it's actually gonna go out and look for the uh, the closest mirror on your system. And I'll just go choose that one right there, apply and grab this one and have it go through. It tells you what the speed is. So I'll let it look for just a second. I'll go and grab that one. So now that we've picked this, this is gonna make our updates and other software installations a lot faster. So big overview. From the very, very uh, start of Linux Mint 19.2, it's extremely well polished. The, the fonts, everything look great. Uh, the icons are well made. Given, over here it says I gotta check my, uh, <laughs> I gotta check my internet connection, which may be true. Um, so I've got just a lot of, a lot of great stuff inside of here. So it looks really nice. If you go through and look at then the welcome screen and switch it from modern over to the traditional, then that's what I did. And so the way I got to that is I just opened up that menu, typed welcome, and when welcome comes up, which it just takes a second, once that comes up, go to first steps, scroll down to the middle right there and choose traditional. And so by choosing traditional, it'll give you that nice, very usable feel that allows you to get through things. I don't even know why modern exists. I mean, the, the idea of the icons, I love the icons of the modern, modern theme. It just looks great. Why not use the icons from the modern theme into a the traditional theme? I don't know. Um, you can probably go through and play with the settings. You can go in the settings and change your themes and uh, switch it over. If they would tell me which one it was right there in that menu, I could go choose it right now. Uh, so we got Mint X, we got Mint Y, Mint Dark. So I can choose that one. You know, maybe maybe that's gonna be something that's gonna work for us. Uh, where's this one? We'll choose that. And uh, if it's just using Mint Y, which I don't know it is, so it's just you know one of those things. And Linux Mint, no, oh, yeah, just like, just switch over to Cinnamon. Those kind of things. And those that those are some theme adjustments that you can make inside your system. You can also make your system, it's Linux, you can make your system look like whatever you want to make it look like. Um, but there you go. This thing is, it's really well polished. It's doing great. But go and make that welcome screen, change that over to the traditional interface away from the modern uh, system settings, fix the scroll bar width if you want to, fix your date and time, enable hot corners, make it where the window behavior is overlap, Go and uh, kind of do the privacy thing if you want it to never forget or forget, whichever one suits your taste. The keyboard speed, something that I like to increase, so to have your speed up. And then uh, the software sources, picking the software sources that are closest to you or the ones that are fastest for you will really save you a lot of time in updating and installing apps in the future. Okay, this video has gone really long, so I'm going to let everybody go. And I hope that you have a, a fantastic time, great week, day, whatever it might be, and um, day or night and look forward to talking to you sometime in the future.